Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! There's no border between um, Islington or Camden and Westminster. There's no border between Camden and, and Westminster. But when I was mayor of London, we, we anaesthetically and invisibly took hundreds of millions of pounds from the accounts of people travelling between uh, those two boroughs without any need for uh, border checks, whatever. There are Come all on, sorts of things. Come on, you can't compare two boroughs of, of London with the kinds of difference in, in the arrangements that would, that would be in place no, after think, Brexit it, between think, the UK and the it's EU. A very, it's a very relevant comparison. Bola in Hemel Hempstead. Hi, Nick. Hello, Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Thank you for taking my call. Okay. Um, may I just read to you very briefly? Because um, I, I don't want to argue. I'll just read something out to you, yeah? OK. OK. So, um... And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said to him, this is Abraham's right. Okay, I, I, Abraham, I, 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 Fola, I don't want you to think I'm rude. I don't really need passages of the Bible. What, what, what's your interpretation no, of what you're going to say? Okay, so I will, I'll just tell you what he said. That's it. Why he established it. Therefore, from this time forth, every man... No, you're reading from the Bible again, respectfully. That, that's the last time. Either tell me your view or we'll okay. move on. I don't just want passages of the Bible read. What, what is your view it's of it? not the Bible. Anyway, okay, it is because the, the, the foreskin was meant to be taken off so that the skin, um, so that they could be the opening of your heart to the light of the gospel. That's the significance. So how does a girl's heart open then? Um, that's very deep. I don't know if you want to hear it. It's to do with the womb, that. That's a sexual thing, actually. Um, but let's not go into that. Um, the light of the gospel um, is the reason why the, the um, it's a token of the opening of his heart, the light of the gospel. And he said we should not... We should, this is a true circumcision, and it will be profit, profitable to you as a covenant written in your flesh, as an everlasting... So it's a sign of a covenant, and it's also a sign of the gospel. Your heart being open to the gospel, and also opens you up to the blessing of the gospel. All right. Seems a strange way to do it, Fola, but again, I don't question your faith. Thank you. Uh, Jazz has called from Tunbridge in Kent to carry on our conversation about uh, extremism in this country. You want to talk about the anti-fascists, Jazz? Um, yeah, um, but just before I do, uh, let me just lay down who I am. Okay. I'm a black man. I voted uh, Brexit. Uh, I really like Trump. Uh, I follow a lot of right-wing media. Um, I like Anne Coulter, so just to point in that kind of direction. Um, what do you like about her and Trump? Well, I like I like the truths that uh, the right wing uh, talk about. You know, um, a lot of truth. Uh, the right wing spread, I think. Give me an example the of the truth that's chimed with you. Um, let me give you an example, a truth from Tommy Robinson, say, about Sharia uh, law courts in this country and how many they are and what they get up to. Is, do you, don't you think that's the truth? Is there a Sharia courts in this country? Well, there are, yeah. Thank you. So I never knew that, but that's the truth I found out. Well, um, well it's, it's, it's been... A, it's been or is it not a new thing, and, and it's, it's long, well, it's, it's long known. Truth? Do you think we should have a two-tiered law system in this country? I certainly don't. I think we well, should just have one law in this country, well, not it, a, a secondary Muslim law. Well, it isn't a two-tier. No, I mean, there are th Muslim there are Jewish equivalents, Catholic nuptial masses would fall un under the same uh, kind of tolerance as well uh, of, of religion. So I, I, I understand. Oh, right. I, th I think we're right to keep our eye on these things so there aren't abuses or limitations placed on people, perhaps especially women. But, um, you know, the oh, sh right. Sharia, yeah, sh Sharia car courts aren't inherently what you might leap to presume they are. But why are they here anyway? That's because the well, because we're religiously tolerant in this country. That's why, but and, and not just to Muslims. But there you go. You're right. You're right. We should keep an eye on on them all. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the difference between uh, right wing extremists and um, Muslim fundamentalists is that Muslim fundamentalists get supported a hell of a lot uh, through government and extremism. Uh, take ISIS for example. A lot of people, a lot of governments have supported ISIS. Um, that's not just a conspiracy theory anymore. It's a supported theory. Mm. Um, so, 
and what, and your, what your what, point is, they're better resourced, know. is it? I don't know what is what you're trying to or what's trying to be created here because I'm a like I said I'm a black guy I don't know what position that I should be taking here because I agree with them a lot of a lot of things they're talking about is the truth a lot of what uh, Muslim extremists do is terrible killing people blowing people up killing people on our but isn't, land but isn't killing people terrible full stop you know if 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 of you look at if you look at what happened to Joe Cox if you look at what happened uh, to Makrama Ali you know th these are th these these are these are hate filled political murders really on our streets aren't they in the way that the the, the islamist terror attacks are yeah i think you need to actually have a proper look at this uh, a lot of these cases here but let me just say about antifa quickly uh, if you would antifa because we need to go to the break yeah, Antifa came onto the scene, let's just point at Barclay, for example, the amount of violence perpetrated there by people who couldn't even argue properly, the people who can utter a sentence. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I don't know what's trying to be created here, but there is no right-wing extremism going on here. There is right-wing extremism going on here. I mean, you know, it's it's been... Uh, widely reported uh, court cases involving it have been widely reported uh, but there is uh, Antifa as well you know we, we we keep an eye on them too and there are stories around them and you're right to say that their methods are sometimes violent but I don't think uh, that yet uh, within the bounds of the UK we can talk about Antifa in exactly the same way that we can talk about uh, neo-nazis can we I, I i can't i i don't equate the two donald trump did i don't you seem to want to as well but um, i i reject that equivalence as things stand that may change antifa may morph into something else but as things stand stand i reject that equivalence uh, thank you for your call though jazz jazz in tunbury ricky in glasgow you want to talk about safeguarding children in homes where an extremist view is held no no what i'm saying is i i have extreme extremist views by modern society. I'm very pro-life. I'm heavily opposed to abortion. That's not extremist. Not it's it's completely oh, legal. God, excuse me, excuse me, my phone call. My sons and I will not accept conscription. <laughs> we would not oppose Islam having its own Sharia law. It's their right to choose. So I'm an extremist. Would you take my children off of me? I wouldn't take your children off you for that, you. Ricky, no. I, he's gone. Gosh, what a charmer. George has called and Furaya from Westminster to talk about Syria and what Boris Johnson has said and the role that the UN can still realistically play, if you think it has one. George in Croydon, hi. Hello, Sheila. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I, uh, yeah, last week, General Mattis, um, that mad dog guy, he, he <laughs> came out and he actually said that there was, uh, the US government could not provide any evidence that Sadat, that uh, Assad had used those weapons in the, in that, uh, is, uh, alleged, well, in that, a sarin gas attack. Now, um, uh, the thing is, if, if, if Assad is winning, which he is, why on earth, would he, uh, would he, would he uh, use chemical weapons against his own people and, give, and create a pretext to be attacked by us? It, all this evidence comes from the White Helmets, who are, were formed by a guy called Le Mesurier, who is an ex-British army man who is now corporate mercenary. Uh, and and, and, and we, we accept this evidence. Oh, okay. it, it looks to, to many of us as if we are engaged in, 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 in okay. active destabilization of Syria. Well, like. Because those rebel areas are bombing Damascus on a regular basis. And we don't hear about that, do we? Well, let, well, we do. We do. I spoke about it just last week, for example. I can only speak for myself, but we do hear about it. Uh, but, but, the, well, but the fact is that 80% of the killings that have been done in Syria over the last seven years have been done by the Assad regime. Um, and uh, what well, I want to say... What fact, I, Sheila. Oh. You say it's a fact, but I mean, it's a fact, uh, it's a fact produced... Well, our by, own foreign... By, by, by well, our own foreign... Really well, let Syria, me speak, you know. George. Let me speak. Our own foreign secretary said it in the Commons and said it again in a radio interview today so for now I'm, I'm going on the basis that what's said in the Commons and recorded in Hansard in Parliament is a fact if, if you don't mind that's what I'm that's what I'm going to stick with as for whether Assad is using chemical weapons 
If Russia, and we know that they did, if Russia oversaw the removal of huge supplies of chemical weapons, I think we can deduce, can't we, that uh, when James Mattis says we don't have hard evidence, that he's direct evidence, he said, that, of the use of, of chemical weapons, but I'm using open source evidence on the ground, not just the white helmets, by the way, uh, but other sources that they use. So uh, all, all I can go on is what James Mattis said, which you've only given us a partial account of. Well, la last week, Lavrov said that, uh, that um, large quantities of chlorine had been imported into East Scooter by the rebels. So, I mean, you know, this stuff is all pretty, um, I mean, what, what, what's going on? I mean, the, it, it, looks, it, it looks like, um, uh, I mean, I don't, personally, I don't believe anything I read about Syria in the paper because I think we are on one side and the side we're on is, is not necessarily the right side because it's the side that wants to destabilize and destroy the country well, like it did to Libya. I think we committed crimes against Libya. That country was wrecked. All right. Absolutely uh, destroyed. Uh, aren't, aren't we, you and I, I mean, aren't we on the side of the people hiding in cellars while their houses and children are blown to smithereens? Those who's, are the holding them, who's holding those people uh, hostage? Who's not letting them out of his scooter? Who's doing that? Who's bombing they, it, George? Who's stopping them getting out? Who's, the who's bombing it, George? Well, I, well the, the, the Assad regime are bombing it because they're, after, they're going to kick the rebels out like they did in Aleppo. Which is why, with the firepower that they have compared to the rebels, and this isn't to deny what the rebels are doing, but with the firepower that a Syrian air force has, aided and abetted by the Russians, that the, uh, the population... Uh, the, the, the civilian population is absolutely the one that suffers most. We know it, George. We've seen it with our eyes. You're absolutely right to point to some of the nuance of the horror of the, the proxy nature of this war in Syria. But the, it's, it's, you, I've, I've spoken to you before and you just constantly sidestep what Assad has done. And that cannot, I'm sorry, that simply can't stand. If against all available evidence it goes well, and remember, that means we end up better off than we are now, individually and collectively. My goodness me, I, I, I will submit myself for a, for, for a public stint in the stocks. I'll be so happy. You can pelt me with rotten tomatoes. So that's the worst thing that can happen to people like me, is that we get proved wrong by seeing our lives improve. What's the worst that can happen to Boris Johnson? Well, ultimately, he's held responsible for the utterly unnecessary decline of our nation brought about by his own weapons-grade lies. And if you need proof of it, then here it is. In November, it was unthinkable economic and political madness. In February, it will not significantly affect trade access or trade across the UK's land border with the EU. Why has he had to do this? Because it has become unavoidable and he has to now pretend that it's not disastrous. In November, before he'd actually understood this, before it became unavoidable, in November, he could be honest and say that would be disastrous. Now he's realized that he's put us in a bus that drives inexorably and unstoppably towards the disaster. He has to start telling the faithful, oh, it's not a disaster at all. There is no other analysis of this. I know how arrogant that sounds. Take it as a provocation if you think that there is. John is in Hammersmith. John, what would you like to say? Oh, yeah, hello there. Yeah, I was just listening to what you're saying. Staying in the EU, well, so we pay £850 billion to stay in the EU. Um, so we're talking about Boris Johnson and saying in November it will be economic and political madness and today saying that it won't be a problem at all. Which, which time was he right? Well, I thought you were talking about the Northern Ireland issue, you know, about the hard border. Yes. Putting a border in Ireland would be economic and political madness. That's what he said in November. It would be so crazy, it would be, in his words, unthinkable. And today he's saying it'll be fine. So when was he right? Then or now? Well, I think I think there's a problem in the first place. Pardon? We're up, we're, we're, I don't think it was a problem in the first place, whether the hard or soft border. I don't think I'd come into, into, into a problem. The only so why did he say is, it was economic and political madness in November? Yeah, but that's Boris Johnson, isn't it? Who believes what Boris Johnson says? You, you know, do. Whether he's you right do. Or wrong. Oh, I don't say I believe what he says. I believe we should leave Europe 100%. I don't believe in anything what we do to do with Europe is right. So what, why did he say it was economic and political madness then, to do this thing that he now says today would be fine? What do you think's happened in his mind? Well, I've got no idea because he's a politician. So when do you think he was telling the truth? Because you believe him today when he says it's going to be fine. You believe that. You're spectacularly wrong, which is, of course, your democratic prerogative. So why do you think he's changed his mind? 
Well, I'm not too sure whether they've changed their mind because, no, as far as I can see, there's one or two people out there that actually tell the truth about what would happen if we leave the EU. If we stay in the EU, no. we know what the problem is. You want to go stay with a sinking ship, yeah? Stay with the EU. Look at Greece, look at Portugal, look at Spain, look at Italy, you, look at Ireland. Have you got a crib sheet in front of you? Do you, do you know how their economies are performing compared to ours now? Do you know what the predictions are for, for every single European Union economy, even the ones that have been in the absolute well, Greece, toilet Greece, lately? Yeah. Greece, let's not, the, let's the, not do the, the crib sheet. Let's not do the UKIP crib sheet stuff. Let's look at this now, because the men who've persuaded you that we are on a wise course are the men who are now contradicting themselves 100%, John. <laughs> Why doesn't that give you pause, my friend? Because, at the end of the day, the Tory party, the Labour party, any politician, European party, the whole lot of it, all got their hands in the same pot, yeah? And at the no, end of the day... No, like no, this, no, you like can't... Like no, that, no, because no. we are the working... We are the ordinary everyday person, and normally... John, that's incredibly state, offensive to ordinary everyday people. So most of them are very intelligent and perfectly capable of understanding simple questions and facts. So, so I'll ask you again... The people who persuaded well, you, you that, the people who persuaded you that this was a good idea are contradicting themselves. So leave the remainers well, out well, of it. Well, leave well, the remainers out of it, John. Yeah, the people who persuaded you it was a good idea are contradicting themselves you can now. Issues, leave them with the bus turn around and say we're going to have X amount of money you pay back to the National Health every single week. You could pick issues of all that, yeah. Yes, but we're not. We're talking specifically but, but, about yeah, today's well, news. So the men who persuaded you this was a good idea are now contradicting themselves. How do you? decide which bit of them to believe. The bit that says it's going to be an unthinkable disaster or the bit that says it's going to be fine. Just you personally, no one else, no reference well, to well, Portugal well, or Greece. Well, Hang well, on, I want, well, I want you to understand the question completely. You have now Boris Johnson, the hero of the Leave campaign, saying in the space of 12 weeks it's going to be unthinkable and disastrous and then saying it's going to be fine. In your mind, John, how do you choose which version of Boris Johnson you're going to support? The one that's saying it's a disaster or the one that's saying it's fine? I just want to understand your Personal psychology. Well, as as he's as he's the MP for Uxbridge now, right? And I lived in lived in Uxbridge in all my life under Randall. Yeah. Now he's come on board as an Uxbridge representative as a politician. Just, yeah. I'm late for Rand the news. It's a well, simple well, question. Well, well, How well, do you choose well, which I, one? I, I can't I can't make a decision on what Boris John John says because I don't believe a word he says. In the, in, Except in, in today, the, you yeah. do believe him, John, because you believe everything's going to be fine and we're going to leave and there won't be necessity necessity for a hard border. Except as soon as you're asked a question that actually involves examining and thinking, you got nothing. You, you, you start referring to the former MP for Uxbridge and the state of the Greek economy. John, wake up. It's 10.31. I suppose there is a third way, the proverbial third way. I'm asking how anybody can see Boris Johnson p p contradicting himself completely on the issue of the Irish border and retain anything other than utter, utter um, uh, derision for him. And John, in, unintentionally perhaps, uh, suggested the, the, the one thought I hadn't, that hadn't occurred to me. You, you somehow will be able to believe him both times. You believe him when he said it would be economic and political madness. You believe him when he said it would be unthinkable to put a hard border in Ireland. And you also believe him when he said it's all going to be fine. That's your kind of cognitive dissonance writ large. Cameron is in Edinburgh. He writes, before last night, James, I wouldn't have had an answer to your question. However, after watching the latest Darren Brown programme on Netflix, I like a bit of uh, popular culture diversity. Having watched the latest Darren Brown programme on Netflix that tests the power of social compliance by seeing if he can get an ordinary person to commit murder, I think I can understand. What it made me realise is that people in authority, positions of authority still, despite the best efforts of people like you, command huge power when it comes to social compliance. This is, I think, Doffcap, Tug, Forlock, Vote, Rees, Mogg territory, isn't it? As a species, we're always more likely to go with the grain than against it, and even more so when an authority figure is the delivery mechanism. Even more so uh, in the hands of a charismatic, which is obviously not always a good thing, person like Johnson. If Derren Brown can get someone to commit murder, Johnson can get people to comply with a hard border on Ireland. It's no big deal. And that's it, isn't it? I, I, I presume you have to either believe him when he said it would be a disaster or believe him when he said it would be fine, but actually the Brexit mindset is perfectly capable of somehow believing both, as long as you don't think too deeply about it. Paul is in Bow. Paul, what would you like to say? Well, um, I just think, um, in your usual irrational way, that you're overstating the case and being totally unrealistic. Which bit, um, Paul? Well, the case, if you're having negotiations... No, no, stand, let's, if, I, 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 you well, know, I prefer you to let, talk would you about... Let me, would you let me say what I was going to say? When you tell me what I've been irrational about, yes. Well, I'm just about to, if you'd let me get on with it. Well, go on, then. Thank you. 
when you have negotiations, the positions can't start off fixed and then remain fixed all the way throughout. Otherwise, you'll never have negotiations. How's Barnier moved? That's right. Now, I'm not, would you just let me finish? No, how's Barnier moved? I would want to let me state my statement. How has Barnier please. moved? Would you let me state my statement? Well, you've already said something that's not true. No, no, no. I've got, you've got to allow me to develop my argument. You Otherwise, carry on then, Paul. You develop away, away, my friend. You. Are you going to allow me to finish? Yes, Paul, carry on. Thank you. That, that otherwise, so what happens is this, the, the UK position is that they want to preserve the free border with Ireland, that's it. If the EU, if the, if the EU are prepared to accept something like that, in other words, to modify their rules to suit the, the conditions of their own member state, Ireland, that might happen. If the EU show no intention of doing that, then you have to move to plan B. And for, for Johnson to conduct, to uh, A, state what is the objective, and that is an objective which is also a public objective and then and then deal with the alternatives if the eu aren't going to play ball it's just rational thinking and i don't see how anybody can expect anybody else to do otherwise well let's begin let's begin with your first your statement. views must change yes so let's begin with your first statement that it's a negotiation and that means everybody moves how has michel barnier's position on the irish border changed since he first laid it out 18 months ago well uh, what, what uh, i don't think it has changed but, but you I, just I, so, you just said it has to rationality on the EU part. No, irrationality is a description of facts. No, well, uh, uh, it, well, it, well, what I'm saying is that they've entered... No, I know what you're saying, Paul. I gave you lots of time to say it, and now we're examining it. So your first statement was that I had been irrational. I, yes. I'm going to park my ego and not insist that you explain oh, well, how. Now, that's going to be a big job for you. No, absolutely it is. I've so let's look you. instead at what you said about negotiations. Michel Barnier's position last week and last year was that if we leave the customs union and the single market, there is no earthly way we can avoid having a hard border or moving the border to the sea. You oh. said that positions changed during negotiations. I would just give you one opportunity now to explain how his position has changed, ever. OK. Well, I, I, I must agree with you formally there. His position hasn't changed, which shows that they aren't proper negotiations. No, it doesn't. It shows that his position is, is contractually uh, binding. It's the nature of the Good Friday Agreement that says yeah. it cannot move. No. Well, okay. well, yes, Paul, you, this isn't a matter right, of opinion. This is a okay. matter, and I've allowed you to be rude to me, and I've allowed you to insist on talking even though you've no. got nothing to say, and I've allowed no, you no, to be personal. No. So here is the question now, OK? How do you have identical economic conditions on both sides of the Irish border? Are you asking me? No, Paul, I'm asking Andy Pandy. OK, so I thought you might have dropped me in from the conversation. No, well, the, well, the, point, I'm, the point I'm making is... is I don't... Is I've heard your point. The question is this. How do you have identical economic conditions on both sides of the Irish border? How do you make that happen, Paul? Well, you have, you have some sort of compromise whereby, as a sort... You can't uh, compromise the Good Friday you Agreement, have, Paul. You have, How? Elect you have compromised an electronic border. It is not beyond the wit of man for the EU and the UK to agree something which suits the special conditions of Ireland. So you've just reached and for that magic wand now that says well, no, electronic no, 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 border, Paul. You there, don't know what you're talking middle, about. There is a solution to it. Go on. And if you're saying there isn't a solution Tell me what the solution is. Then are, are you In suggesting detail. we should not leave the EU because of the Irish border? Do you is tell me what the solution is, Paul? Are you suggesting oh, that we cannot Just admit leave you can't the answer EU the question. because of the existence of the Irish border? I am telling you that we cannot sustain the Good Friday Agreement and Brexit in its current form well, without well, either building a border in Ireland or moving... Then. Oh, Paul, my friend, I'm sorry. Well, it is. It's just no, going you to... Carry on you talking. can't expect there's, 60 there's no million people to have their future governed by a particular agreement <sighs> so you rang in to tell you, you rang in to tell me that I was being irrational about the Irish border and you conclude the conversation by saying, actually, you're absolutely right, it's an utterly insuperable obstacle but it shouldn't stop us from leaving the European Union. Because it involves some renegotiation okay. of the Good Friday Agreement. Yes. Have you read the Good Friday Agreement? What, what, the, the, what, have what, you read the bit about renegotiations in the Good Friday Agreement? What, the so bit where it says it's a holding let's tactic? Let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. What you're saying to the UK oh, public oh, is oh, that we cannot leave anything. the European Union because of the existence of the Good Friday Agreement. No, we cannot have a hard Brexit that involves leaving the customs union and the single market because of the Good Friday Agreement. You you, there's a thing that, that no, okay. let me tell you, the, let me tell you EU, some truth. Let me tell you something simple. James, come on, let's just follow this through. No, Paul. James, let's follow this through. 
Let's follow oh, this God, through. Right, you carry on, mate. No, you let's follow this through. You're now saying is that the EU refused to change, the, to change their rules or to modify their rules to suit the special oh, case of Ireland. Sorry. And on that basis, that means that the Good Friday Agreement can't be changed. And that means because the Good Friday Agreement can't be changed, the UK cannot leave the European no, Union ever. I haven't ever. said, Paul, here's a, here's a wonderful thing. Well, and answer I, and that I, question. No, and I, and I, that you haven't bad. asked the question. If you did, I just said no. You said, oh, is that what you're saying? I said no. Does that work well, in your head as an answer? Then. Does that work as in your head as an answer? Well, go, say, right, good. good. So yeah. now, no, Paul, I'm going to insist on speaking now, because here's what you've done, OK? You phoned in to say that Boris Johnson is somehow embarked upon a very sophisticated and clever negotiating process. You've ended up by acknowledging that there is no solution to the problems that the Irish border presents that would involve retaining anything that remotely resembles what we've got now. You've added to that the idea that somehow I'm suggesting we have to stay in the European Union because of Brexit, because of the Irish border, which is simply not true. And the only question question I have for you is this. How do you have identical economic conditions on both sides of the Irish border? Well, after should. Paul, Paul, the, the, Paul, you have to listen to me because otherwise you just make all these weird noises and none of us ever learn anything. The simple instruction is this. Identical economic conditions on both sides of the Irish border. One side is in the customs union and the single market. One side is in neither. Now make that work, Paul. No doubt that there can be arrangements which will allow Describe a special circumstance of those two million Describe people them. in the north of Ireland to be settled. Describe them, Paul. It. Describe them. It's whether people are willing to do it or not. Describe them. Well, you know, what, what, uh, 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 that it's a technical issue. Well, describe you know, it. I'm issues. clever. I can keep up. Describe the circumstances in which you can make that work, Paul. Because <laughs> there's. I don't have to go through all the details of it. But but I don't want all the details, Paul. I want one detail. You can have an electronic board. You can have the trade. What does that mean? What does that mean, Paul? You can have it done electronically with a minimum. With a how does an electronic border? How does an electronic border test? No about Paul, it. Paul, how does an electronic border test the milk to see whether or not it's infected or not? How does an electronic border <laughs> count the amount of barrels in the back of a lorry? How does an electronic border know whether I've got guns in my boot? Milk isn't infected. You don't have to test every, all the milk all the time. You. Not all products coming from world, not everything is tested okay. all the time. I've not every best. sample is tested. I've done not my best. sample is tested. No, You're because there's no border there along, now. Paul, Paul, everything I've said is true. No, it's not. You're making it up. You're putting extreme positions, <sighs> unyielding positions. All right, let me ask you again, Paul. How is the border? How are we going to have identical economic conditions on both sides of the Irish border? But they won't when be one identical. side is in the they customs will, they union. Will be compatible. That's all you have to have is compatibility. Oh, Some okay. degree of compromise, of course you can do it. But you, and it's a question of belief. You're absolutely well, no, certain it can be done, but you have no idea and the how. Will to do it. Of yes. course it can be done. How? Well, I've just told you, you have it as... as, even okay, as, as so we're going for electronic borders. You have some I'm going to give you five minutes now. I'm going to give you five minutes to... People to do certain yep, five things. minutes to describe the electronic border. Go on. You just let them get on with it. Uh, as you, oh, you just, mate. I'm sorry. You're, it's you're inventing the difficulties because you you because. Uh, because I'm inventing the difficulties beliefs. that Boris Johnson described as unthinkable economic and political that madness. Was, of course, no. That was that was the, that was because that is the UK negotiating. Because that's what they want the that's what they want the EU to agree to. But the EU are not yielding not on it. Therefore, we have to move sense. to Plan B. And what's Plan B again? Well, well, well pl Plan B is some form of electronic border. Okay, right, let's let's just agree on that. We're, the electronic border is the new unicorn. Am I right? Well, one thing. What, what, yes, I, it's ten forty-eight. Robert is in Dulwich. Robert, what's going on? James, let me. I just need to ask you a question because I'm not oh. sure about this. I think, like Go you on. said just now, there's a journey. Does a hard border, if if the electronic solution is possible, and I know you've got reservations there. But does that well, there are 275 mean? border crossings between Northern Ireland and Ireland. That's more than there is on the entire eastern border of yeah. the European Union. It's not that I've yeah, got yeah. reservations about it, it's that it's absolutely impossible. And if we do come out under World Trade Organization rules, which is what these idiots want, then it becomes a legal requirement to have that hard border in place, regardless of the Good Friday Agreement. So anybody sensible, and I will still take calls from insensible people because it's important, but nobody sensible is allowed to describe electronic checking as being anything other than complete pie in the sky. Now carry on. Well, I just, I just wanted to explore it a bit more before we can say it's complete pie in the sky. But do I understand it to mean there'll be cameras? Is that what the... 
we're really talking about. Why are you asking if me? If I buy a piece of, I will, if I buy a piece of French cheese, yeah, that hasn't been checked at the border or anything like that, but it has been checked. And there's, as I understand it, there are companies that do a random test at the farm where it's produced, and then it can be sold in Europe. So why not extend that to the case in Ireland? If, if an Irish farmer makes some cheese and it goes into Northern Ireland, it's checked, it's been pasteurized or whatever it is they do. And then on an electronic docket, it says that lorry will be containing this stuff. It can go through freely, and the camera allows it to go through. It's 275 border crossings. Dude, with a CCTV 275 border crossings. And, and you, you, you're saying that you have some sort of overall check. Do you know how many times a pint of Guinness crosses the border before it gets to Britain? Do you know how many times a Mini crosses the single market borders before it gets sold in a, in a, in a, in a garage in this country? But I'm, I'm just asking because that's the whole point of technology. It automates and speeds up processes. Yeah. It means you can deal with bulk data. You see, if you have these cameras on the 270 crossings... How do they stop illegal the train, immigrants coming in? Illegal immigrants should just have... Uh, well, I, listen, this is just an idea. Well, I'm asking you, how do you stop legal migrants coming in? From, from uh, How do you stop European Union illegal. citizens walking yeah. over those 275 crossing points in their millions if you've got no you're, hard you're, border you're there? right. Technically, people could just walk across, but then you but have... The whole vote is about controlling point. our borders. No, no, but then they get picked up by the system, right? Well, picked because up by I the think, system, the system that we're so broken, we're voting to leave it. Here's the thing that I... Here's the general problem I've got in my head with this, and oh. I think where well, I'm not 100% happy with the EU here. Look, the EU's got this top-down, one rule, one rule fits all type thing. And with Northern Ireland and Ireland, there's a history, there's a cultural sensitivity. These are places which have rule of law, so you can rely if you have an agreement, and, and some of it, there is a, an element of trust in there, it'll work. Right, this isn't something no, it's not trust. The it's, world. Not, it's not. It's not about trust. It's it's about laws. It's about actual no, it requirements. Is, I, I think the law has to change because what we're saying. But the will of the people change. decided the law. There were two referendums on both sides of the border, no, mate. No, no, the no, results I'm came saying. in in the 70s on one side, and now you're saying we've got to change I, the thing they voted for. No, James, I'm agreeing, but I'm saying that rule, laws written down by men can be changed, and in this case, what I'm saying is. If the EU can't adapt here, if the EU can't see that actually when I'm looking at the Northern Ireland case, there's a special sensitivity there. We're a caring, thoughtful organisation that wants to grow and all the rest of it. Actually, in that case, we can say, we can redefine hard border to we not having a hard border to allow hard border. It's the World Trade Organisation that defines what a border is between countries that are uh, operating under their rules and countries that aren't. You, you, you're also are conflating few... the customs union with the single market a bit, but that's... A conversation no, for another day. Not necessarily, not oh, necessarily, because okay. if it comes down to basically cameras... In a sentence, well, what are you saying? You're saying cameras. Comes... No, but Everything I'm will be saying, fine because cameras. No, no, no. I'm not what then? Because I'm right? late for the break. I, I, I don't know why... Let me talk like explain to you. If this boils down, if people are saying that it won't work because there'll be violence because they see gantries go up, I think that's wrong. Yeah, but uh, no one on the program has said that, Robert. No one on the program has talked about violence. The, the, the rise, the possible rise in terrorism is possible. What we're discussing is how, in the space of three months, we've gone from stating that there is absolutely no prospect of a hard border, while the European Union were saying all along, if you leave the customs union and the single market, we will absolutely have to have one. And the people on the other side said, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. And now they're saying, oh, actually, they're right, but it's not that bad after all. And then you say, but hang on, Boris, three months ago, you said it was madness. You said it was economic and political madness and you said it was unthinkable and today you're saying it's fine why because the other side's position hasn't moved at all they were saying this all along that's the problem that's the problem and the answer to that problem cannot and is not cameras what can the prime minister say on friday to reassure you that northern ireland isn't going to be the casualty of Brexit or the first casualty of Brexit. What can she what can she say in response to what Michel Barnier said today, uh, suggesting a common regulatory area across Ireland? I mean it was quite a you know, he said it was the backstop option, but it was quite an explosive thing to say, really, at this stage in the game. And he will know that too. Theresa May kicked it right out of the park half an hour later in Parliament. 
But what can she say now to reassure you that actually Northern Ireland isn't going to either derail Brexit or derail Northern Ireland? 0345 6060 973, the number to call. You can text 84850 or tweet at LBC. And maybe you agree with Boris Johnson that people are using the Northern Irish border uh, to try to railroad uh, Brexit entirely, to try to prevent it from happening at all. 0345 6060 973, the number to call. Mike has called from Hemel. Hello, Mike. Good afternoon, um, Sheila. Thanks for taking my call. Pleasure. Um, yes, I agree with Boris, but that's not why I called. Okay. I would like to offer Northern Ireland a third option. I think it's time for Northern Ireland now to come of age, to grow up, be adult. I think Northern Ireland now should become a Crown Protectorate, like Gibraltar, like the Falklands, like the Channel Islands, where it is no longer directly ruled by... Um, Westminster, or is directly responsible for Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland needs to become their own sovereign state. They can call it Northern Ireland, they can call it what it likes. This would solve so many problems at a stroke. The Southern Irish would warm to Northern Ireland, with it being no longer tied to Great Britain. Um, some sort of unification... Well, there's already... The that process is already happening, isn't it? 20 years on from the Good Friday Agreement, that mutuality, yeah. 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 Yeah, but Northern Ireland is still tied to the UK, and with all the problems that brings, they're still they're still angst um, for, for from past conflicts. If Northern Ireland were to become its own sovereign state, okay, you've got to have a government in there first of all, which is going to be hard to do. But then it might not be. Again, well, even, well, even the be, assembly being, isn't functioning at the moment, is it? Well, yes, but then with it being divorced from Westminster and being divorced from Great Britain, that could also solve a lot of problems. You would then give Northern Ireland its own sovereignty, its own nationality, its own, you know, it'd be its own master. It could do what it likes, when it likes. Um, and if, moment, and, but Mike, if what it likes is being part of the United Kingdom, well, that fully fledged as it that, is now, what then? Well, that would, that would have to go to a referendum. That the, only, oh, the people of Northern Ireland. Sure, you want another referendum that. on these well, shores? <laughs> Well, really, no, it wouldn't be on our shores, it'd be on their shores. Well, that, their shores are our shores. Well, yeah, but only they can decide what they want. They can either keep the status quo, or they can they can go further and, you know, um, mature as a country. I see no reason why that can't happen. I think there are probably a lot of people in Northern Ireland that might want to take that option, because that would take away a lot of unnecessary angst and annoyance from through past conflicts. And it would give them a sense of self-responsibility. Mm, I think it would appall a lot of people in Northern Ireland what you're suggesting, Mike. Let's talk more about this speech that John Major has given in the last hour or so. A blistering speech is how I'm describing it. Um, pointed at Theresa May in a kind of, in a gentler way than he was uh, talking about people like Gove, Johnson, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who he called the ultra-Brexiters, making no bones about the fact that he thinks they are deceiving themselves and the nation. Ray, what did you make of this speech, Ray Luton? Uh, I've got to be honest with you. I mean, I, I listened to LBC, and apart from you, yourself, I can't see anybody that gives people the real chance. Everybody like James, are trying, are trying to dilute the whole thing. Now, you've got John Major and Tony Blair, who... Basically, both played a part in this country in my time, in my lifetime. And I'll tell you what, how they can have the forum and have the audacity to come on radio and slate people and say they're going to ruin the country and go and do this and go and do that. Whereas, uh, they've got no, they shouldn't even be listened to. If it was Winston Churchill, then I'd understand. But this bloke stabbing uh, Theresa May. Now, I'm not Conservative and I'm not Labour. But Theresa May, she's got a tough job and she's a woman. And with all this time we're talking about empowering women you've got people like that coming onto the stage and, and anybody who wants to listen to his rubbish is beyond belief now the hard facts are is there are going to be changes this business with northern ireland and this business with trade it happens these things have been happening since the beginning of time and to say that this country is going to crumble and going to have this and that and him to stand there and slate conservatives for their opinions so you should be listening to these people. I can't, I'll be honest, I didn't listen to it because it was on the radio well, on your show. All right, but, but what, what, what is it that he and Tony Blair did so wrong that makes that, in your view, that makes what they say now not worth listening to? Well, Tony Blair should be in prison for war crimes. All right, Iraq, one. yeah. Yeah. But, Tony but Blair, domestically, yeah. what about domestic policy? Domestically, well, we look at our, our, our whole system when it goes from our NHS, our schools, our policing, 
everything in this country has been going slowly but surely downhill for a long time, which in, which in fact is what's caused this, this situation we're in at the moment, where people said, look, we need a change. Now, these people have made their money out of the country. He's, 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 if it's so good in Europe, why don't you go and live there? He's got a house everywhere, I suppose, but he's actually belittling the people who voted to, to leave, plus those Conservatives who are intelligent people who voted to leave, and who's given him the forum to do it? I don't understand. Well, I suppose as a former Prime Minister, it's not difficult to find a forum, is it, to speak? Well, absolutely, but if you had Winston Churchill up there, Somebody who's actually holds a little bit, people got a little bit of respect for it. Actually but do you not? But good. do you not have any respect for what John Major and Tony Blair and others uh, achieved in Northern Ireland, for example, with the Good Friday Agreement? It seems to me that that is his main motivator in speaking out. Listen, Northern Ireland yeah, is always going to be a hotbed. It's always going to be like that. Whether, whether no matter what government comes in or whatever plans are, because there is always going to be. It's a, it's the same with borders and customs. You're always going to have these. We've had them all over the world, and we've still got them. I mean, Trump's got his problem with Mexico and the wall. It's no different. That's, it's no different than what we've got. There is always going to be a way to work through it. But these people are stabbing her in the back. They should be encouraging her and, uh, you know, and supporting her to get behind the country. And, and then he goes on about this £350 million. Pounds, it should have went, well, what about the money that he hasn't put into the NHS? He's quick enough to say to people are saying, that, look, we could have this money to put into the NHS. But he, he doesn't bring, you know, they shouldn't be in the forum. He has got no, res nobody's got any respect for but Ray, like if, if John, it. and I wish he was, if John Major were here in the studio with you now, listening to you, he might say to you, it's the very fact that I respect you that I feel I have to say the things I say because you no. are being lied to. No, he's never, no. Are you honestly telling me he's never lied to the public? Look at, you've got to look at the situation. In his government, yeah, did, did this country thrive in his government? No. That's why Tony Blair got in and then did it thrive for a little thing. Things were only going to get better, yeah. But look at what happened in the end. Now, what I'm trying to say is no matter who's in government, we have to support them. We're British and we have to stand up. No, we don't. Them. We don't always have to support who's in government. Why that's not, not That's not very British. Right, listen, listen, uh, listen. You know, you can respect is, them, but you can challenge them. So you, if we don't support them, it's like anything else. In the end, we're going to just fall into the hands of like, this Junker and whatever his name in. All those people are literally taking the mickey. They are taking the mickey. And I'm telling you now, they need us more than we need them. Because All right. I tell you what, if, Ger if Germany haven't got the right to sell their cars to us, what's going to happen? All right, Ray, thank you. An impassioned call from Ray against John Major. Stephen in Huntingdon, hello. Ah, his old constituency, hello, in hello, fact. Sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, hello. I'll, I'll try and take a big deep breath. I Go was on. really, I was really, really impressed with the presidential speech of John Major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get, see where I'm coming from? Heard it all before. So's the Joe public. That's why they're not in office. He's holding hands with Tony Blair, skipping down the European road of the United just, United States of Europe, being puppeteered by the bureaucrats of Brussels that are under the control of, um, what are they called? Wait a minute, when you don't live in a democracy... What's dictatorships. Um, dictatorship, that's the one. <laughs> right, we live in a dictatorship. No, we the don't. They, yes, we no, do. No, we don't. Don't, don't be silly. Ball, does it? Language. Yeah, I didn't say it. I know, but it's bad enough. I know. If you want to stay on air, keep it I'm clean. Saying. I am trying to keep it clean. But what I'm saying is... My vote actually is a non-starter, so it don't matter what you vote. Well, it mattered no in the referendum, it. didn't it? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, when it comes to Northern Ireland, give them a referendum if they want to consolidate the country together or turn Northern Ireland into a uh, separate sovereign country because we don't want the old times coming back and nor do they. What would we call it? So, Let's take, let's take them out the... What economy. would we call it, Stephen? If call little old England would be all on its own with Scotland. Right? And Wales. Don't so forget Wales. The equation. Don't forget Wales. What? Wales. Oh, yeah, sorry. What about Wales? Yeah, Wales. Yeah, sorry about Wales. Wales is devolution as well. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah I, keep, I, keep, I keep forgetting. But see, we're, we're just like the devolution of that, devolution of this, this... But if, you know, we, you're, not, you're the second caller uh, this afternoon <laughs> to suggest that we... 
the, yeah. the Northern Ireland somehow just goes away. It, it's not that no, simple. No, no, it's no, part no, of no. the United what Kingdom. We want, what we want, we want, the British we want to stop the bureaucrats, right, using Northern Ireland as a weapon of war against the democratic vote... You just don't like facts, Stephen. Stephen, you just don't like people. facts. It's not being used as a weapon of war. It's a fact. It it's a fact. Yeah, a fact of what? It's a fact that it exists, it's part of our nation, and there's a problem with the border Shall if we just I ditch Brexit. What? Look, at Ditch the end Europe, of the sorry. Day, past history is past history, right? We can't. This is present. It, can we? This is present, living, breathing exactly. history. No, why no, don't just say exactly out, when I disagree with you. This is present Tony history. Blair and all the rest of them to give their presidential speech like that. Blah blah blah. He's been well trained. We've heard it all before, right? Mad cow disease and all that. Oh, right? God. That's it. Mad cow disease was a good time to end that, I think. Thanks, Steve. Stephen, I think, in Huntington. Ironically, John Major's old constituency. Cathy's in Abington. Hello, Cathy. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say that you hit the nail on the head when you said um, about Barney's eyes are glistening now that Corbyn's got off the fence. Um, it is about taking, it is about, um, taking control um, and destroying... Um, Oh, I've lost my plot now. <laughs> Hang on, no, no, wait a minute. No, what you were saying about the... Uh, they're using Ireland to get to Britain. Britain is the last piece of their federalist jigsaw that they need so badly. Well, they're not going to get Britain, are they? That, that's the problem. Are they, that's they, what uh, they and want. But I don't believe that the Irish people would not vote to get out of the EU. Three votes, like that lady was saying who was in front of me, was to get them to stay in the EU. I believe the Irish people are being pulverised by immigration and all the issues that are really? going on. Well, why, how come there's only 11% support there for, a, for an Irexit? I don't believe that. Well, that's what all the polls say. Well, I, I think they need to go again because um, I think that Ireland needs to be strong and come with us on this. And Theresa May needs to stand strong. We well, must hold strong. The Federalist EU, which is a supremacist regime, is out to get Britain. With Britain, it will complete the jigsaw. The Kalergi plan is real. Oh, dear. OK, Cathy, if you say so. Lorraine is in Chelmsford. You want to talk about Brexit, Lorraine? Hello there, Ian. Hi. Hi, I do get a bit exasperated when I hear people ring in and saying they want a second referendum because they didn't know what it was about. I mean, how long was the campaign for it? It was about a year. Now, I certainly knew what it was about, and everybody that I know that voted Leave knew what it was about. But it wasn't all about um, my Im immigration, so I want that knocked on the head. For the majority of us, it was about sovereignty. It was about living in an independent country um, forcing our, you know, mapping our own pathway to go out in the world and trade globally. Um, you know, it was more than immigration, as I say. And for the likes of um, Gina Miller to say, she, it, it, we were successful in the EU. Successful for who? Successful the people with their own vested interests. The likes of Nick Clegg and um, Nick Clegg and... <laughs> Nick Clegg and Nick. Well, look, I understand what you mean. I, look, everybody had different reasons for voting in whatever way they did. I, I think it is nonsense, nonsense to say the facts weren't available. And yes, of course, in any political campaign, some of them get twisted, some of them get perverted, some of them get exaggerated. But it happened on both sides. And I think we're intelligent enough to see through that. Lorraine, thank you very much. John is in Gravesend. Hello, John. Good afternoon. Some facts. The Britain, Britain spends $49 billion dollars on defence at 2017 figures. Russia spends only, not much more, $69 billion. Well, it's 50% more. Hang on, though. No. Now you add, there are 29 members of NATO, and the US budget is $616 billion. Canada and Europe combined is $299 billion. So in total, You've got $915 billion worth of arms, weaponry and military points to little old Russia. The question is this. Well, they're not... Well, point, that, well hang on a second. Hang on a second. You, you, you've given us some facts on spending. Uh, let me give you a fact as well. Yeah. Those weapons are not all trained on Russia. OK. But the point is this. How is it that Russia can produce 
such a fine defence, weapons and military infrastructure and system for their money, when we spend two-thirds of that and we've got nothing, we've got laid-up ships, uh, aircraft carriers with no aircraft, the question is, what about our budget? Mm. We should cut it, I, build a hospital. No, I don't agree with that. I think it should be better spent because I think our defence procurement procedures are ridiculous. We waste a huge amount of money. So I, I, I'd happily save money. Um, I don't particularly want to cut it uh, because I think the army has been cut far too much already. All, all I'm saying is to compare UK only of 29, 28 other countries against little old Russia is totally... Unfair. Well, I think it, you describe it as little old Russia. You, you tell that to somebody who lives in Ukraine or one of the countries that it's threatening, and I don't think they will agree with your language there, because if you, if you live in Estonia and you worry about Russia coming over the border at some point, um, Estonia is, is very little compared to Russia, and there would be no way that Estonia could fight back or, or, or not fight back in any meaningful way. So that is why um, they are in a military alliance with, with NATO. During the war, America lost roughly 450,000. We lost roughly 450,000. Russia lost 27 million. And, and what on earth has that got to do with Russia's defence or aggressive uh, policy today? No, Ru Russia's, Russia is within its own borders. Your question is, why are the Americans over here? There's two little islands... In, in the Bering Sea called Little Diomede and Big Diomede. Big Diomede is the Russian one. This is where Alaska and uh, Russia touch. And Little Diomede is the American one. In the winter, when it freezes, it's about a couple of thousand metres. They can walk and, and talk to each other. And I, what I'm trying to say is if, they, if America has a beef with Russia, why is she not? facing them, why is she not around the other side of the world? Why is America sitting on Europe? The Stockholm Syndrome. We're just literally, I mean, uh, vassal well, state. I, I don't know how old you are, John, but do, do you not know your history since the Second World War as to why America has been in Europe? Of course I do. Well, why are you but, asking the question then? But the, well, the, the situation's developed. I mean, the Germans have asked them to take their nuclear weapons away and they haven't yet. They've, they've bugged Merkel's phone. I mean, God, with, with friends like America, who needs enemies? So you're yet another one of these Russian apologists who think that Russia does everything right and America does everything wrong. No, I think if you've lost 27 million of your people uh, and, and you've been attacked... And, and, you, and you just dismiss the fact that America lost half a million people in the Second World War. You, you don't think that matters, that counts for anything? I, 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 I'd like Americans to go home. And, and you can't that. even bring yourself to actually value the American contribution in the Second World War, can you? I, I value their coming in late, and uh, I, I, I value Operation Red when they wanted to attack us in the 1930s through Canada, <laughs> amongst other things. That's factual. That's a Channel 4 documentary. <laughs> oh, it must be factual then. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I struggle to understand the motivation of somebody who comes on the radio ostensibly to talk about defence spending, spends the whole time defending Russia, says it's absolutely no threat to us, when, when it is clear that it, it's seen as a threat to people around its borders, and spends the rest of the time slagging off America, which has spent billions of dollars in the defence of freedom through the Cold War, in the defence of this country and other countries in Europe as well. I, I find that a weird sense of priorities well i just go for the facts well you clearly don't do you, you go with your prejudice that's what you go with well, your, your anti-american prejudice and your pro-russian bias that's what you go with uh, well i just i just america russia is accused of all sorts of sins not by you it isn't moving within his own borders not, with, not by you it isn't and yet america can do three thousand miles how, how is you how is ukraine within its own borders how is Georgia within its own borders? How is threatening the Baltic states within its own borders? There's no threat to the Baltic states. Well, they perceive I mean, there to be one. I mean, I mean, if, if you want to go deep into, in, into uh, 
things that went on in the war, why don't we discuss the, 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 discuss the Danzig massacres, which just... Well, no, because I'm, I'm, we're not talking about that. We're to, I'm, talking, I'm talking to you about the present threat from Russia to the Baltic states. All of the Baltic states perceive there to be a threat, partly because Russia in, uh, flies over their countries illegally quite often and makes threatening noises to them. So they think there is a threat, and I don't understand why you can't acknowledge that. O o overflying of different countries, including our own, is in fact pre-agreed by treaty. Not, not by Lithuania and Estonia and, um, uh, and Latvia, it isn't. I don't think you'll find that uh, there's any contravention there. You don't think, but you don't know, do you? Whereas, whereas I've, se I've seen all the reports on this and that they do it regularly, presumably to threaten those countries. Uh, well, I I'm sure Russia can attack within 45 minutes. You know, I mean, God, you've been told you've been told a pack of lies from Iraq to, to weapons of mass destruction to the reason we went into Vietnam, the CIA. No, but I, I'm I'm just look, I'm I'm not defending any of that. I I'm just interested as to why you seem to automatically believe what Russia tells you, and you automatically slag off the Americans because they've lied so often. And and the Russian propaganda isn't lies at all. I mean, I mean, you, you said you said on a program once. What has, uh, what has Japan done to little old Korea, OK? And from 1910 to 19... No, as an example... You talk about <laughs> well, you're saying I said something. I have no recollection of saying that at all. And why, are we, why have you suddenly... Every time I ask you about Russia, you then deflect it on to some other country because no, you, you have fallen for every single piece of Russian propaganda that you've heard, and yet you don't fall for what you call American propaganda. I'm no. just interested to know why that is. What motivates you? I, all I ask you to do is, is look at both sides of the story. Well, I wish you would, in because you don't, do you? Korea, all, all, all you want to do is listen to Russian propaganda and you swallow it hook, line and sinker and yet you can, in this conversation which has lasted nearly 10 minutes you haven't been able to bring yourself to say anything positive about America and its role in the defence of freedom and yet you're quite happy to swallow the propaganda from the Russians Everything I've said I can, I can, I can take you to an American source I don't, I don't make it up you know, no, you, well, you you, you may you may not make it up, but but you just it. you just listen to what you're told by the Russian propaganda units, and you swallow it. That's that's quite evident from this conversation, in my view. But there we are. Bye now. Please.